In this video, I will demonstrate the use of attributes to enforce row-level security. As a summary, I will create a report template in the Jasper Report Studio to use a built-in attribute-based parameter. I will define the attribute value for the users of an organization, and I will publish and run the report from Jasper Report Server to restrict the user's row access to table data based on the attribute value. The following materials are recommended for reading as it will help in understanding the content of this video. In the Survey Administrator Guide, sections 2.4 and 5.5.2. The first thing I want to show you is the report template designed in JasperSoft Studio. As you can see here, I've designed a very simple report template which would extract information from the store table and I'll show you the logged in user attribute built in attribute based parameter. So in order to make use of the attribute, you go to parameters and you right click and you select create parameter. Once you've done that, you name the parameter as logged in user attribute, the same name as that of the documentation followed by underscore and give it the actual name of the attribute that is defined in Jasper server which I will show you later on. Then for the class specify java.lang.string and ensure is for prompting is turned off. So now that we have the parameter for the attribute based built in. We also reference it in the query. So we'll go into the query and as you can see here it's a simple select from the store table where I've made use of this attribute based parameter. The purpose of creating the logged in user attribute is so that whenever the user logs into the Jasper server to run the store list report, the values set against the city's attribute name will be used to return the result data whenever the user runs the report. So the result returned is based on the query as shown earlier and the values will be used within the WHERE clause. I've also put in a, another standard built-in parameter which is not attribute based and I've included it into the text to record the username logged in into this report and that is simply the logged in username uh, where you create it under the parameters with class java.lang.string. The next step is to assign the attribute name to the users who will be running the report. And we'll also assign the attribute value corresponding to what the users are allowed to see in the report. In order to do this, log into the server Jasper report server as either the super user or as Jasper admin and navigate to the manage users section. In order to set an attribute for a particular user, click on the user and click on edit and then go to the attributes tab. Then click on add a new attribute and enter in cities exactly the same syntax and name as that in the studio, followed by the value of what this user is allowed to see from the store table. So in this case, Joe user is a user that is only allowed to see records or rows that only has San Francisco returned as the cities. 
I have also set the city's attribute for another user of the organization. For dual user, I have set three values, San Francisco, Los Angeles, and Mexico City. This will allow dual user, when she runs the report, to return more data from the store table. We now return to JasperSoft Studio, where I will publish the report. In order to publish the report, click on the Publish Report icon and publish to a folder on the Jasper server. I will publish to the demo reports folder and overwrite the existing report. After it has been successfully published, log in to the Jasper server as Joe user. And as Joe user, run the role level security report. And based on the attribute values assigned to the attribute name of cities, Joe user is only allowed to see results that matches San Francisco as the cities. I now log in as Joe user. And run the same report. This time, Geo user is allowed to see more rows and more cities because there are more cities assigned to her attribute name of cities. This concludes my demonstration. Thank you for watching.